Nigerian national football excellence, from grassroot and sustainability, pennyworth contribution to the fray. During my secondary school days, many moons ago, I was advantaged to attend a school with sound academics track record, some very innovative teachers, others fatherly at the height of Nigeria's economic prowess and achievement. And as it forged ahead on many fronts, professionalism, governance, defense, education, sports, travel, tourism, manufacturing, development of infrastructure, banking and finance, transport, and the list goes on. I would be a fool to think I could capture the entire foundational fabric of the society other than to provide a bird's eye view from my status of emergence into teenage. Of these plethora of arenas, I would like to hone on sports, especially football and slightly touching education, both my keenest unguided interest and as my father strove to juggle the affairs of life with ensuring we received a good education home and school. Just to mention briefly, I recall the attempts to attend the best schools, home tutoring, good diet and extracurricular activities were all hallmarks of our household. As I spotlight on my few secondary school years and the purpose been the overview of the nation's success in football until the 1996 Olympics and what led to that and the futility of efforts ever since to achieve or exceed those achievements. Predominantly in light of recent catastrophic performance of the senior teams, the continuing saga called NFF and belief that our salvation here lies in the hands of foreign import players and coaches. In the days I speak of, players were accomplished at home even up to national level before transferring abroad, whilst a host of other homegrown talents were ready to take their place. It seems coincidental that a very avid and determined player in my secondary school days was recently crowned with a stand in his honor. Though this matter has always lay heavily on my mind, only as I gradually lost my supporting zeal, which came to the foreground during my secondary school days. I recall that we had the one school vehicle and roughly 900 students and miraculously I was able to secure a place on the bus for almost all of our external games. I was that keen and almost always first on the queue and with the patience of a sage and quiet humility of a dove. I guess that was what got me on the bus more times than most. Anyhow, I will stop here. This preamble was just to indicate some qualification on my part to pen this piece. We won the Oyo State Championship in 1979 and went on to lose to CMS Grammar School, Lagos, at the Interstate Secondary School Tournament in Calabar, which took place after my school days and the loss of my father, so my supporting days were put on hold temporarily as we embarked on a journey of finding a home. So the question is, what happened to the nation's football prowess at senior level that culminated into an Olympic gold medal in 1996 and then declination? I will not attempt to provide a graph or other depiction of the sliding stages, peak and troughs that has been the fate of the senior national team. However, from observation and as slightly intimated early, there were organization from grassroot. I recall we had these period outside normal lesson times in primary school, where the school team members were selected and practiced. Before going any further, this organization was not restricted to sports alone, but as I started with, to infrastructure. The days of five years plan at national level of building, the discovery of crude oil, car assembly plants creation, the Kano groundnut pyramids, cocoa farmers, house in Ibadan as emblem of that era, university creation, discussion topics on fledging professions and how to educate children, the clear demarcation between the educated and not, with the stigma that came with that, building and property development, finance, banking, and the local and ruling governance and inspection, the home health inspectors for promotion of hygiene, the training of children in how homes are managed, the introduction of supermarkets and sustenance of the local ones, and as my inimical phrase, and the list goes on. Organization was the crux of society, economy then, and football was caught up along in the tsunami of the thirst to create a pan-African nation. Not forgetting the influx of nationals from all over the globe to help in the management of newly discovered and existing resources and wealth. As a result, the Naira was once stronger than the pound and parents supported, paid for their children's education abroad. The grassroots was developed and sustained. The society invested time, support, and were involved not just as commentators but participant. Corporations had football teams, involved in the League and Challenge Cups tournaments which the youths were so enthralled about. The locals were all behind these teams. There were international standard stadiums, and for other sports too, hospitality were available, and money was scarce for most local yet manners were instilled in cultural, of good ones, observance, where thieves were dealt with, for example, was common occurrence. 
As football was played from the young up and well organized by local and state level sports council, the media reported on matches frequently, with talks about teams' players, radio was common, and football match commentators were stars of the time, rivaling if not bettering than other nations such as the UK. Things worked and so did football and ancillary activities, as we will see without which a nation cannot succeed in winning or increase in ability to keep on winning. I needn't tell you what operate nowadays. I sound like an old man with those words, but to cut it short, all the above have been transferred in Nigeria's case to the UK on the main and Spain. Italy and our talented players roam these football fields. I am not in any way criticizing the rise of Nigerian footballers onto the global scene. No, not an iota and more grease to their elbows as we say we need the foreign earnings they bring back for one. But I am sure you catch my drift. The link or correlation between decline in grassroots sport organization and our gradual derecognition as the representatives of Africa, a strong footballing nation who pose a threat to any country's team and silencing the football world is high. The bigger shame is those who came out and excelled from this operating module and are the elms of affairs refuse to keep up what created them in the first place, taking away the ladder after reaching the top as it were. We cannot continue to throw away our resources. Yes, the advent of technology and increased egalitarian society has mean access to global sporting event and comparisons. As a young man once justified this paradigm shift by drawing attention to the state of their foreign football pitch, stadium, supporter, and coverage quality they get, compared to what we have locally, arguing that who wouldn't shift focus. It strikes me as odd when I encounter people in Nigeria sporting Arsenal, Manchester City, Manchester United jerseys, whilst the local likes of Enugu Rangers, Shooting Stars, Remo Stars, and Yimba, Bendel Insurance, Bridge, Julius Berger, do not get a look in. And we have the audacity to cast blame when our teams perform below par, when part of that lies at our doorstep. I am by no means a football expert or sport professional, and my only claim to fame is, an avid supporter that shouted the loudest, was beaten along the way, walked miles on an empty stomach to cheer, commiserate with my beloved school team as appropriate and it extended to the national team as I entered the post-secondary school world. I recall an incident about a friend's reaction to the loss of World Cup qualification match in 1978 due to an own goal by the infamous Odia. This friend wouldn't eat for days until his mother called him up sharply that he was heading for the grave for men who are busy enjoying themselves. Anyhow, I have rambled long enough and to conclude, Though a novice, it seems to me that to return and exceed our 1996 zenith of football achievement, we need to return to the grassroots sustained organization, an ancillary, good healthcare, local support and encouragement, then maybe we will rise again like the phoenix, as they say. Just my pennyworth, as it were, to the whole debate about the state of football in Nigeria today, as a living observer, participant in the actual events leading up to Olympic gold glory of 1996.